95% mortgages are back, or they will be within the next few days. Following on from the budget announcement made by the government, they announced they will be stepping in and reintroducing 95% mortgages back onto the shelves where they were previously non-existent thanks to COVID-19. Now, this isn't the first time we've heard of this. We, of course, remember that Boris Johnson made an announcement about turning a generation buy to a gen generation rent a few months ago. But at that point in time, not much was really said about it, but now we know more. So let's go through all we know about the 95% mortgages, and I wanna to touch upon how this will really affect the housing market in the future. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Man, is helping you be better with your money. So what is the 95% guaranteed mortgage scheme? Well, 95% mortgages allows prospective home buyers to save a 5% deposit towards their property. Now, 95% mortgages are not a new thing. They were very, very common before the financial crash in 2008. But they were still around even after, but just in a minimal capacity, they made up around about 1% of the mortgage population here in the UK. That was until early last year when the COVID-19 pandemic hit us and the 95% mortgages were wiped off the shelves completely. This was because banks were fearing of a housing crash and they were pulling their most riskiest of products and the 95% mortgage was one of them. The mortgage market has been a difficult one thanks to Corona. Home buyers now are being advised to save their deposit to the tune of 15%. You can still get a mortgage with a 10% deposit. Uh, that's what I did a few months ago but it is becoming increasingly rare and it is far more difficult. That's why they're saying 15% and you'll have a much more easier ride. So let's put these percentages against some numbers. So consider a house that was worth 400,000 pounds. A 15% deposit means that you'll have to save 60,000 pounds to obtain a mortgage. 10% you'll need 40,000 pounds. And for a 5% deposit, you'll need just 20,000 pounds, which is still a lot of money, but I'm sure you'll agree is considerably less than the other counterparts. And therefore this scheme will definitely help people that can only save for a very small deposit get onto the property ladder because 10% and 15% can sometimes be hard to reach. So what is the difference between this guaranteed mortgage versus any other mortgage that you can find on the market? Well, for you as the buyer, there is absolutely zero difference between the two. The only difference applies to the lender's perspective, so it doesn't have any impact on yourselves. So from a lender's perspective, remember how I said that the 95% mortgages were wiped off the shelves thanks to Corona? And that is because they feared that people on these loans, because they have borrowed more money compared to those that are on the 90% mortgage or 85% mortgage, were at higher risk of defaulting on their loans and if the housing market began to crash the lenders will then start losing money so they wiped it off the shelves so the way this government guarantee scheme works is that they are incentivizing lenders to bring back the 95 percent mortgages by effectively saying hey if someone takes out one of these loans and they do end up defaulting we will compensate you a proportion of the net loss in the event of repossession so this is essentially good news for the lenders as the risk associated to these mortgages have been drastically reduced. And this is no wonder why large lenders have already come on board. You've got the likes of Barclays, HSBC, Lloyds, NatWest and Santander ready to give 95% mortgages from April onwards. Virgin Media and other lenders are expected to come on board a little bit further down the line. It is important to note that this scheme is only available up until December 22. However, it is being reviewed shortly before its expiration. So who knows what will happen after. Another difference to point out is that please do not confuse this with the existing help to buy equity loan scheme, which also allows you to save up for a 5% deposit. With the help to buy equity loan, the government actually purchase a proportion of your property. So you'll never get full ownership of your house until you pay back the government in full. In the guaranteed scheme, the government will not be involved in purchasing any equity within your property. The deal is only between yourself and your lender. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So who is eligible for this guaranteed scheme? So the property does have to be here in the UK and it has to be a property that you will be living in. Buy to let mortgages will not be covered here. 
The scheme isn't restricted to just first time buyers. If you are a home mover or you have been a homeowner in the past, you are still eligible for this scheme as well. The property has to be 600,000 pounds or less and you are not restricted to new build homes. You can of course buy properties which have had previous owners. You can use this scheme if you have a deposit between five to 9% and when you do take out a mortgage, it has to be a capital repayment mortgage. You will not be able to get an interest only mortgage, but we don't like those, so that doesn't bother us, right? <laughs> and lastly, but also crucially, you will also need to pass the lender's affordability check to see if you can get approved for one of these mortgages. I do think there is a misconception associated to this in the sense that because I do have a small deposit, I am allowed to borrow more. That's actually not the case. The amount that you borrow will be determined by your income and this typically is about 4.5 times your annual income. So how much will the interest rates be with one of these schemes? This is obviously a very, very crucial number when it comes to taking out any mortgage. Now this obviously determines how much money on top of how much you've borrowed will you need to pay back the bank. Now the lower the interest rates is of course the better. Now unfortunately with these schemes, the interest rate numbers have not actually been released, but they will be within the next few days. But typically what we can expect is that the lower the deposit is, the higher the interest rates will be. Now considering that the average interest rate for a 10% deposit mortgage currently stands at 3.56%. We can therefore expect that the 5% deposit mortgage will have a higher interest rate than this average. So is this a good thing? Will it achieve Boris's promise of changing a generation rent to a generation buy. I definitely believe there are some positives obviously to be taken away from this. Positives such as that it allows home buyers with smaller deposits get onto the property ladder. It is definitely a good thing that this scheme isn't just restricted to first time buyers only like with many other schemes. And the fact that you can use this scheme on properties with a value of up to 600,000 pounds which is significantly important if you are living in an expensive place like London. However, I do want to touch upon what I perceive as quite negative things that come from this scheme. This will by no means fix Boris's promise of changing a generation rent to a generation buy. As you probably hear in the news, the housing market here in the UK is definitely overpriced and the current model definitely favors large investors and the wealthy, which sees low to middle income earners faced with a Goliath amount of money that they'll need to just get their foot on to the property ladder. However, you're probably arguing right about now that this scheme fixes that issue by allowing people that are struggling to get to that 10 to 15% deposit target, settle with a 5% deposit, and therefore that is a smaller amount of money and they can put their foot on to the property ladder. And I surely agree with you. However, this will only happen in the short term because what I expect to happen once these mortgages become available is that this will increase the amount of people that can now buy a house and therefore Therefore, there'll be a massive increase in demand for properties and we all know what happens when there is an increase in demand prices for houses will then go up as well making it even more expensive to buy a house now we've already seen this last year when the house prices grew by 8.5 percent in the uk and that was in the middle of a global pandemic where many were fearing the housing market to crash so why did we see such an increase of 8.5 well, last year, Rishi Sunak introduced the stamp duty tax holiday, which saw many home buyers that would be normally faced with a large tax bill when it usually comes to buying a property, get that tax bill completely wiped off or drastically reduced. I was actually blessed with the stamp duty tax holiday when I purchased this property not too long ago. Um, this was at 450,000 pounds and the stamp duty tax that I would have paid because I am a first time buyer would have been 7,500 and that holiday made it down to zero. So this massive tax reduction flooded the housing market last year and is still continuing to do so as the stamp duty tax holiday ends in June 2021. And this saw the prices of houses increase by 8.5%. And I do expect that the 95% mortgages will do a very similar thing. And then eventually we'll be faced with a, probably a situation where house prices are way too high that now they'll be introducing a 1% deposit mortgage because the 5% are now becoming an unreached amount. 
probably an extreme example, but <laughs> it's definitely a plaster over a very large crack in the housing market model. The only way that I can see fixing this problem is to look at the supply side of the housing market rather than focusing on the demand side, which is us as the home buyer. I would much rather see the government introduce incentives to companies to build more affordable homes here in the UK or see some actions on the 250,000 plus homes that are currently empty here in the UK and are empty because they are only seen as investment vehicles for large investors or the wealthy. So it's in my opinion that one of the best ways to actually make a generation rent to a generation buy is by fixing the supply side of the housing problem. We need more affordable houses here in the UK and unfortunately the government are not really looking into that. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are on the 95% mortgages returning. Are you excited? Will you be getting one? Or do you share these same concerns that I have of this only being a short-term fix and not serving as a solution to the long-term problem? But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. I love having a discussion with you guys. I would also really appreciate if you smash that like button that does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my very small YouTube channel. I've actually seen some considerable growth, particularly within the last few days. And I just want to say a really Really, really big thank you to those that have supported me on my journey so far you have no idea how much it means to me to see that my content is actually being useful to help people in their day-to-day -day lives so a big big thank you from the bottom of my heart and yeah as always I release a video every single Monday so if you want to keep up to date with those as well hit the subscribe button as well take care bye